Hi, I'm Old Norse Specialist Jackson Crawford. As of fall of 2021, I have spent more than a year as a PhD academic and former full-time faculty at several institutions outside of those institutions. I stopped teaching in May of 2020, and I no longer have a paid position at a university. How is that going for me a little bit more than a year out? Well, that's what this video is about. In fall 2019, I was starting my third year as full-time faculty at the University of Colorado Boulder in the Department of German and Russian, which is where the uh, Nordic or Scandinavian languages and uh, Nordic or Scandinavian literature uh, classes are housed. I was frustrated with where my career was at, even though I had wound up by coincidence back in my home turf of the Rocky Mountain states. There were no opportunities for uh, promotion for going up, right? It was a static non-tenure position that could be renewed, but also wasn't guaranteed renewal. And I had had positions like that for a long time at different universities. I had taught at UCLA from 2011 to 14. Uh, that was on one year renewable uh, appointments, which uh, were at the mercy of an individual I was replacing who didn't like me. Um, and then I had also taught after interim period 2014-15 of not being in, uh, in teaching at uh, the University of California, Berkeley, 2015 to 17. And then I wound up at the University of Colorado, 2017. And then 2019 started thinking maybe I would do something different. Not only was I not very satisfied with the career prospects within academia, like I said, you know, these non-tenure positions, uh, just renew without ever giving you any advancement. But no matter how much I did for a department or a university, I was never really gonna get rewarded for it, right? I was teaching classes with hundreds of people and that was providing the money to pay right, for other <laughs> faculty, right, tenured faculty, <laughs> to get hired or promoted. And uh, I didn't enjoy those big auditorium classes either. I preferred if I were going to interact with students, interact with them in a capacity where I could know them as individuals. And also I didn't like having students there who, and this was of course most of my classes, Norse mythology or Vikings being uh, taught as general education requirements. These students are there for a gen ed requirement, right? They're there to tick off a box and they kind of look at you as a jailer. And in the meantime, I had begun this YouTube channel in late 2016 as a supplement to my income at the University of California, Berkeley, where I was paid very little. And by fall 2019, it was, oddly enough, my main source of income, right? I was making more from uh, Patreon donations to my channel. I've never used YouTube ads um, than I was getting from the university. So I began to wonder if maybe, maybe, I can make a living outside the university system from Patreon donations to my YouTube channel, from the royalties on my books, from consulting projects and other long-term projects like that. I visited with a career counselor and spent several months doing that, um, discussing you know, what the risks were, what my situation was, doing all of those career uh, aptitude measuring tests, and finally, uh, we both concluded that it was about time for me to try uh, because I did have a way to try. It could even be a sort of pioneering effort to show other people a, a way to do something new with their academic backgrounds. And I wasn't getting any younger, so I might as well try uh, at 35 instead of 45 or 55. So in May 2020, I taught my last class at the University of Colorado. I retain a ceremonial appointment there in uh, the center of the American West that allows me access to the library and things like that, but I no longer teach classes. Now, how's it going? Well, 
uh, okay, right? Uh, I'm glad that I had already built up uh, enough income via Patreon that I knew that I could live off of it, right? I didn't jump into this and then start Patreon. I built up a Patreon and YouTube following over three years before I even considered this and four years before I, I jumped. Um, so even though I took a big income hit in summer of 2020, I was expecting it and I knew that I could survive on that lower amount of income because I had already been doing it for years, right? So I had to kind of go backwards uh, for a bit, but I, I knew how to. Um, you know, there's a little bit of, of, at first, a little bit of maybe some social embarrassment, right? I used to be a professor, but it's nothing like when um, I found myself out of a job at the end of the 2013-14 school year, um, when an abusive situation with one individual led to my job there uh, not existing anymore at UCLA, and, and I wound up getting a job that I could have had as a, as a high school dropout, then I really did feel a lot of that sort of social embarrassment about like, well, you know, cleaning up the bathroom now, but I used to be a professor at a big university. <laughs> my handwriting's in Frozen. Um, there's less of that now because, I mean, honestly, I left education to pursue education, right? I'm not in a classroom anymore, but now my classroom embraces, you know, up to 180,000 subscribers and, and more on a few particular videos. I'm getting information out there and not having to worry about whether I am uh, catering to the real specific, real weird, real shifting interests of the couple of tenured gatekeepers at the top of a field who always are gonna decide what the fashionable things to publish about are and are gonna measure you by how much you publish in obscure journals to interest them and not by how many people you reach in the public. In fact, we'll consider it almost a demerit, a weird cork or eccentricity that you wanna to talk to people about your subject who don't have PhDs in it or might provisionally have PhDs, in it. might not provisionally have PhDs in it. Um, I wonder too, if now, you know, not that the specific material that I talk about, the conjugation of Old Norse verbs or the, the meaning of a, a, a runic inscription or something like that, not that any of that is specifically important to the fate of our civilization or something, but I wonder if the way that I'm presenting it is an important new development, even if um, not that many people recognize it yet, right? This knowledge in the humanities, subjects like mine, language, literature, history, these things won't get many people jobs. In fact, degrees in this sort of thing can make it harder to get a job, as I found out after UCLA when, you know, that weird line on my resume, PhD in Scandinavian studies, made me look like kind of a freak to a lot of employers and was a big question I had to, to, to answer, right? An albatross around my neck. But we teach them like they are job skills and that's, and then charge people sometimes a lifetime of earnings to learn them in a university. We set them up for a lot of frustration and the academic culture that's developed and this isn't unique to academic culture, lots of other subcultures do this, has become self-referential and self-reverential without thinking as much about the ground that that ivory tower is built on or the people outside of the ivory tower who can chop it down if they don't understand why the ivory tower is there. Personally, what I've decided to do is step outside of that tower, go directly to my students not get paid from, you know, the, the crumbs of the tuition dollars that I bring into a university, um, but rather get paid directly by people what they think that this material is worth through donations and let them learn this material for free and hopefully help, you know, besides just communicate information about my specific subject, hopefully help inculcate some skills that are useful in other areas of life, some scholarly attitudes toward source material, some, some skepticism about taking arguments on, on faith or authority. 
Um, you know, certainly I don't ask people to take arguments on, on faith in me or on, on the basis of my authority, whatever that would be. Huh. I, had, I had actually written out a whole statement about this that I haven't been reading from, but I'm going to read the uh, conclusion so that I give you something tidier at the end of this. I still might find these degrees an albatross around my neck again. For anyone thinking of a career in this kind of field, know that not even the best day has gone by since fall of 2013 without me regretting my doctorate degree for at least a moment. But for now, I'm supporting myself. And maybe more impactfully, I'm showing, one slow day at a time, a different vision for what education in a field like this can be. One that doesn't rely on luring grad students to pay with their 30s for the curiosities of their 20s. One where you decide what my teaching is worth to you and donate to me directly instead of paying intuition money that I'll never see. One where your classroom is where you are and where your instructor is rewarded for reaching you and more of you and you more effectively, not for publishing deliberately obscure articles to signal deference to the tenured few who keep the tower gate closed. What I do here specifically, day by day, teaching Old Norse verb conjugations, translating Viking poetry, hardly matters to anyone in the long run. But better people than I am have started to try it too. Simon Roper, Luke Ranieri, Andrew Mark Henry, Luke Gordon. At some point, someone might notice that you can get an education outside of the ivory towers hierarchy. And even if I've long since given up by then, I hope I'm alive to see the river shift its course and feel that I added a couple forgotten drops near its source. Well, I hope to update you again, I hope optimistically, on this pursuit of scholarly life outside the ivory tower another year from now. For now, from beautiful Colorado, let me wish you all the very best, and I mean it.